Put your dead raccoon baby in a crib and fill up on ice cream and pickles because we're in for another hour of gaslighting and emotional manipulation, or as I like to call it, living with my ex-girlfriend. There's only one more episode left before part one of Delicate is over, and in this video we're going to take a deep dive into the biggest questions and theories the show has to offer. Keep in mind I've not read the book this season is based off, so there won't be any spoilers, just good old fashioned sleuthing. As always, I've left timestamps below so you can see all the topics I'll be covering. But before we begin, make sure to like and subscribe, but hey, it's your body. It's my body, and I'll get pregnant when I want to. It wouldn't be a great AHS season without a crazy jump in time. Here we are in 1555 England with Queen Mary I, the daughter of King Henry VIII. Mary never had any surviving children from her reign in 1553 to 1558, thus the crown was passed to her sister Elizabeth, who we also see in this scene. In episode 2, we saw one of Miss Preacher's conspiracy theories, and how it was all about Queen Mary making a sinister deal to secure her place on the throne, which included a sacrifice to infernal powers. It seems this sacrifice was her firstborn son, who she delivers to the Ashleys. I know that name doesn't sound too spooky, but I really don't know what to call them. It's very much implied that the Ashleys are the Raven women from last episode. They don't age, we'll see them as an expert PR team in present day, and they can predict the future, telling Elizabeth that her time to reign will come. They also have the ability to turn women barren, which is what they do to Elizabeth. Elizabeth too bore no children. The child itself is something these Ashleys have been waiting for for 6,000 years. It's heavily implied this child is Satan or a child of Satan with these claw-like fingers, something that's also seen in the intro credits. But we never find out what happened to this child or where the Ashleys took him. All we really know is that they want another child, and this time it's through Anna. Mary made a deal with them to have the most fruitful reign in England's history in exchange for the child. Does this mean that Anna made a similar deal? Dreams have been a common theme throughout this season, and Anna's dream is to become a famous award-winning actress. What's worse for your mental health? the harmless app or the death of your dream you have a peculiar penchant for turning dreams into nightmares together we're gonna give you the life of your dreams unfortunately i wasn't able to get a clear image of this latin inscription on the baby crib but if any of you happen to have a super hd copy i'd love to know what it reads siobhan is up to no good not only does she hire the two ashleys which makes me think she might be in cahoots with them but we find out she's sleeping with the director of anna's film hamish this is likely how he got anna's address for the gift basket last episode siobhan gave it to him did you tell him that i barely know this asshole now now Hamish and Siobhan have their own deal going on, something Siobhan calls purely transactional. There's definitely something more than sex going on here. Siobhan mentions an interview Hamish did with GQ magazine in which he said the plot for the auteur was something that just came to him. Did Siobhan actually come up with this plot? Did Hamish make a similar type of deal for fame in exchange for something? Is Siobhan using Hamish to get pregnant? She did say she wanted to have kids, but her IVF never worked. But something kind of tells me she could do something better than Hamish. Last episode, we saw Anna fixate on this dead raccoon. I thought this was going to be the end of it, but we see her bring the animal into the house and dress it in baby clothes and put it in a crib. Truly disturbing behavior. I also think it's pretty weird that Talia's basement has a crib in it. She mentioned to Anna in episode one, she hates kids and never wants to have them, so why would she have a crib in her basement? And as gums bleed here, something we found out could be a sign of early pregnancy. At the end of the episode, Anna will eat the dead raccoon. Eating the flesh and blood of animals is often something Satan would do, like we saw the character of Jed Potter, who was possessed by Satan, do in Asylum. It's also possible that this whole segment is a dream. Before this scene, we saw Anna bash her head into this crate and get knocked unconscious. I also want to talk about the black cat. It serves no purpose to the plot whatsoever, and having a cat on set is actually a big deal for producers since it's a big expense to hire an animal trainer for the day. I tend to think that this was put here for symbolic purposes, as black cats have traditionally been associated by being possessed by evil spirits, and that seems to be what's happening to Anna too. Anna's upset that Dex didn't tell her about meeting up with Sonia in the Hamptons, but he actually did tell her in episode 2. A lie we can actually catch Dex in, however, was when he says he was with Anna when Cora told them about Miss Preacher's crazy conspiracy theories. Anna actually heard about this over the phone in episode 2 when Dex was not with her. That woman, Miss Preacher? Ah, 
that old bag. Don't worry about her, she's harmless. So how does he know about that? Was he at the clinic? Was he listening in on the conversation somehow? Or are Anna's memories so jumbled we're dealing with an unreliable narrator? We get our first glimpse of Dex's mom, Virginia. Dex told Anna in episode two that her mom lives just down the way in the Hamptons, but that she won't, quote, bother them. Although Dex says that Virginia loves Anna, that's totally not the vibe I got from her. And good on Dex for standing up to his mother when she starts to badmouth her. But the real mystery here is who is Dex's dad? Virginia wants to sue him for satanic abuse she suffered by him. These are repressed memories she helped uncover with the help of a psychotherapist named Eugenia, who claims Virginia's husband performed satanic rituals. Does Dex still talk to his father? Could Dex have learned these rituals and performs them on Anna? Is Dex's dad Dr. Hill? He's the only other male lead in that age range we've seen so far on the show and would explain this special connection between these two. I am feeling very optimistic about our chances. Why do you say that just to you? Although we don't get any Miss Preacher this episode, Ivy is back to her old tricks. No one has seen Ivy but Anna. Could she be in her head? I also like how she smokes, something you shouldn't do when around pregnant women. A gift of flowers arrives with a warning, you can't trust any of them. Only a few people know where Anna is, but honestly it could be anyone that sent them. From Nicolette, Ivy, Miss Preacher, or even Hamish. Anna still hasn't gotten rid of that photo of her husband and ex-lover, Adeline. To make matters worse, her face morphs into Sonia's, perhaps a manifestation of Anna's paranoia that her husband is cheating on her. Now when Anna goes for a late night craving, did anyone else think it was weird that the ice cream was in the fridge? Also the combination of ice cream and pickles is straight up satanic. I thought it was weird that Kamal joins Anna and Dex on their trip back to New York. I thought he was Talia's home security guy, but now he apparently has his own company and has had the time to install these creepy security sensors all over Anna's apartment? Something tells me these aren't for her safety, rather to keep an eye on her. And you'd think they'd take out that don't do it Anna mirror by now, a constant reminder that your house was broken into. I really have no idea what purpose Nicolette serves. She's this house manager who doesn't even seem to know there's a creepy satanic lair in the basement. And she's terrible at disposing of dead animals on the property. I'm also curious why Anna hasn't shown anyone this door. I mean, if I saw this thing, I'd be inviting everyone down to check it out. Once again, Anna is the only one to interact with Nicolette so far, so it's possible she could be in her imagination. Those were the topics I wanted to cover today, so now I pass it off to you. I want to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and for more bad takes you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.